Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the weekly wave. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I want to talk about is our ASR. And um, it actually closes on July 1st of 2022. So please go ahead and start checking your calendars to verify that they're correct and make sure you've got your professional days, parent teacher days marked correctly so they're reporting correctly. Um, I, we also want you to check your student view to make sure transportation is being counted correctly. And please check your find missing students. Um, new this year, we have an alt ed student view. Um, once you're looking at that, if you have questions, you can make a note in the notes section and it will email state aid automatically. And you can, if you have any questions about the ASR, contact state aid at the following email address. It's state.aid at sde.ok.gov. Um, or you can call Lori at 405-522-0139 or Mitzi at 405-522-0120, okay? Next, we're gonna jump ahead to the exit codes and exit dates. Um, actually, this is a accountability in, um, in or an accountability ask, and unfortunately, we don't have anybody from accountability on the call today. Um, we will have people on the call next week. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this information. If you have any questions, write them down. And I ask that you would send them to my email address. So that way we can be prepared next week to respond to your questions. Um, my email address is nancy.flores, and that's F-L-O-R-E-S, at sde.ok.gov. Okay, so well, here's what we're looking for in regards to exit codes and exit dates. So any student that has graduated this year, at the, this is at the end of the school year, or left during the, the middle of the year or at the end of the year and is going to a different district or going out of state, those students will require an exit code and exit date prior to the certification of your ASR. You'll be able to verify those that is populated on your ASR. Um, we are currently working um, in a, on a way that you can go to your reporting section on the ASR and look at the student view. And once you print that, it should show your exit entry, entry date, exit date, and then the exit code that was used for the student leaving. So that's coming though, I, it's not available at the moment. So. If this is not populated correctly, it'll affect your dropout port and your graduation report. And we also have included a list of codes below to ensure that you're using the correct code when in dating these students. Another thing I've been asked to discuss is we're seeing some confusion between entering an exit code for homeschool and virtual charter schools. So if you have a student that has left your district and is receiving instruction at their home by their parents from their curriculum, you're gonna code that as 1918. Now, if they go to a virtual charter school, that code's gonna be 1919. And I'll address those in just a minute as well too. So the current exit codes um, that we have out there and you know, keep in mind when you don't enter them correctly, it does affect your accountability reporting. So valid exit codes. If the student is leaving and going out of state, it's going to be 1909. If they are going to private schools out of state, it's 1912 and 1915. If they're going to a private school in state, it is going to be 1910, 1911, 1913, and 1914. And now if they're leaving the country, it's going to be outside the country and it's 1916. If they've gone to an institution, it's going to be 1917. Homeschooling is 1918. Charter schools, including virtual, is 1919. And 
in-state public transfers, if it's they're going to another public school in state, it's going to be 1907, 1908, and 3508. Um, at the end of school year, we actually um, would want to see 3505, but that 3505 um, code can also be used if you've got a student that's going from a brick and mortar to a virtual environment, so, or vice versa. When you end data, you can use 3505. Now, for graduated students this year and every year, it's gonna be 1921. If you have a student that has died, it would be 1923. And if you have a student who has left for illness, it's going to be 1924. So if you have any questions about the codes or the dates, those questions should be directed to um, accountability at sde.ok.gov or student data info at sde.ok.gov. Virtual district transfers. So this is new and along with the new transfer law, but all virtual um, district moves must have a virtual transfer um, started on them. This allows us to track how many moves the student has made to a virtual district in the single year and ensures that the student is in compliant with the new transfer laws that have taken effect. I know this is July 1st, but it was January 1st of 2022. So um, be sure that that happens when dealing with virtual district transfers. Waive requirements documents. Um, we have updated it for the next school year. And here are some of the changes that you'll be seeing. So the, the doc document used to be one document. We've separated it into three. You've got the waive overview document, our school's interoperability framework code set, and then the SIF mapping object. All documents are now available and, and are searchable in PDF format. So um, they are located at the following link. They're actually on um, the sde.ok.gov and it's student-information-documents-and-guides under reporting specific. Now, if you like the air table, table it's also been updated in um, with the new information, so you can use that as well. Um, we have updated a one of our basis of emission codes that was border, and it's now been changed to border NR, which is border non-residents. And we added a new basis of admission code of border R, which is border residents. Um, we will be collecting the following items from student personal, and that would be your class rank, your weighted GPA, unweighted GPA and your English learner intervention strategy with the values below. So you're gonna have an IS1 for transitional um, bilingual. You're gonna have IS2 for dual language and two-way immersion. You'll have IS3 for English as a second language or English language development. IS4 would be your content classes and integrated ESL support. IS-5 would be a newcomer program. IS-6 is other. Please know you can only populate, you'll only be able to populate one strategy and that would be considered their primary strategy. So that is coming for next year, 22-23. Um, I uh, want to go over the enrollment and attendance guidelines um, that were set in place for 21-22. Um, and ask that you be sure to, or make sure that you're coding your students' attendance correctly when it comes to COVID-19 um, scenarios. For instance, if the kiddo is traditional and they're being, you know, instructed at the brick and mortar level, then if, an, if they're absent from traditional learning and is not assigned or being served through a distant learning environment, their attendance code will be COV. The attendance type will be absent, but the um, at other attendance type would be excused. The value would be a half a day or a full day and the description is COVID-19. 
Now, if they're distance learning, and so this would be a short-term placement away from traditional learning in accordance with the district's distance and learning policies, these offerings could include virtual online instruction or the use of packets. But so it means if the student is absent from traditional learning assigned to a present in distance or in distance learning environment based upon the local distance learning attendance policy, you're going to use DVAP. It is an absent code, but it's excused and the absent value is zero. And in the um, description is going to be distance learning present. Also, if the student is absent from distant learning environment, assigned to and absent from distant learning environment based upon your local learning attendance policy, then the code you would use is DBA. It's an absent code. It is excused. The absent value is a half a day or a full day, and the description is distance learning absent. Now, as far as RV off and RV on, um, they're basically going to be based upon your local district attendance policies. So um, RV off is a virtual off-campus environment. RV on is virtual on campus. So it could be a blended learning on the RV on where their student is both at the brick and mortar and off campus as well. So please be sure you're coding those correctly. Um, STN wizard. Make sure you're working your STNs as they contribute to students showing up and missing students. Um, I know there's been questions about working these, but you are able to resolve anything that doesn't require a new STN created. Or if you have question, questions about resolving an STN, if you don't feel like it's the right one, there is a note section that you can send them a note and it'll go to um, our STN person that works those and we'll get those resolved for you if you have questions. Otherwise, you can work those yourself. Ownership wizard. So all ownership conflicts need to be resolved as students are be count to be counted in your district. So we recommend that you reach out to the conflicting district if you're not seeing the conflict being resolved. Now, if then you don't see it resolved, I'd reach out to your REO. Sorry about that. Um, validation errors. We're still seeing a lot of validation errors. And they can affect your student demographics and cause um, errors on missing students as well in the ASR report. So please be sure to work those. If you have questions on how to resolve them, you can always reach out to our email box, which is studentdatainfo at sde.ok.gov. And I've got that email address in a future slide. So your new WAVE accounts, if you are giving WAVE access to new employees, it can take up to 24 hours for all the access to show up. Now your superintendent will need to provide SSO access prior to requesting a person to get WAVE access, but in, and they'll need to contact the OMS, OMES help desk at the email below. And it is service desk at OMES.ok.gov. All right, we're just about finished. So um, if you have questions in regards to student data, please contact us at studentdataInfo at sde.ok.gov. Or if you need help or want to research some of the document and guides online, you can access that at sde.ok.gov uh, forward slash student dash info dash documents dash and dot dash guides. Other than that, I think we... Um, that's all we have for today, and I thank you for joining the weekly wave, and we will see you next week.